Hello, it's Mark again. It's time for Scotch Sunday. Today, I have one I have not tried. I've been wanting to try it. I don't typically do a lot of these because I'm not a big, huge fan of them. There are not that many out there, but I am going to do the Gun Levitt Caribbean Reserve. Uh, I had to look up Caribbean versus Caribbean. It seems the most of the consensus that Caribbean is the correct pronunciation because a carob is some sort of potato like in the potato family. Um, and so that's where the name is derived from. So anyway, enough on the name. So anyway, this is a rum cask, rum finished. It's finished in rum barrels. This is no age statement, 40% ABV. Um, and let's see what else can I tell you. That Glenn Levitt was, of course, been around a long, long time. It's, one of, it's the first, to it's been, as you can see on there, the 1824. It was the first distillery to legally apply or to apply for a license to legally distill in Scotland. Um, it, other illicit distillers were mad at Glenn Levitt, the Glenn Levitt, because uh, I think his name was George Smith, I believe, um, th because they wanted it to remain illegal because the prices would be higher if, if it was illegal. But once it became legal, they were afraid that it would increase competition and the prices would drop. So um, they were rather upset with him. And because of that, they uh, they wanted the, they were hoping the law would be repealed. Um, and he was George Smith was threatened on several occasions. He was given two flintlock pistols by a duke. I think the guy was a duke. I'm not positive. Um, one of the dukes in the area to carry around with him for protection. And the Glen Levitt has produced scotch almost nonstop since 1824 when they opened. Uh, their only closure was World War II. They, through prohibition, they continued to distill the downturn in the latter half of the 20th century. They kept distilling. Uh, like I said, the only World War II was the only time they shut down. There was other distilleries in the area that tried to use the name, the, the Glen, or Glen Levitt name, because that's the area that it's in is called the uh, Glen Levitt. And some of the distilleries have been granted permission. That's why occasionally when you see some barrels, you'll see like uh, Glen Murray, Glen Levitt, or, you know, just a hyphenated name because they were, some distilleries were granted that were, are in the area, were granted permission to use the name, but they have nothing to do with the actual distillery. And it's the second largest single malt seller in the U.S. No, excuse me. It's the largest sing single milling, single malt seller in the U.S. and the second worldwide. In the 1950s, they accounted for over half of the all the scotch, not just single malt. All half of the scotch sold in the U.S. was the Glen Levitt. Um, some of their scotch does end up in blends, including Chivas Regal. Um, and the uh, Chef's Real actually handles the bottlings for Glen Levitt, the uh, Glen Levitt. Um, but approximately about 6 million or s bottles are sold in single malts. It, about 10, 12 years ago, 2008, they expanded the distillery, which um, may be why we're starting to see some of these new bottlings. This rum cask, a cognac cask came out about the same time. There's a French oak cask. So we're seeing some different offerings from them now. So it may be because they were able to double their, or to expand back in 2008. So we're starting to see some of those things. They have 14 stills, seven wash and seven spirit, and their stills are lantern shaped. Uh, they're not the typical column shaped stills, which gives it, supposed to give it a little bit more taste. So let's see here. And it says nothing about natural color or chill filters, so I will assume that they they do both. Particularly since this is no age statement, it looks older than you would expect. So, okay, so let's take a look here. It says here, in 1824, you know what we're going to do? We're going to open it up and let it air out a little bit before. I think I have my camera on the wrong side of the phone. Okay. So, oh, anyway, I'll let you see the color. And a 
like I said, I'm not a huge rum cask fan, so, I, uh, but you know, I wanted to try it. Let's see what we got. Tropical fruit for sure. Okay, so let me give you it's going a little way, right? Okay, I'm gonna be able to look at it in the glass. Again, it's probably colored, so don't wanna to pay too much too much attention to that. So alright, so on the bottle. It says, in 1824, George Smith established his distillery in the remote and wild valley of Glenlivet. Ever since his smooth flowing whiskey has been, re ever since his smooth flowing whiskey has been regarded as the definitive single malt Scotch whiskey. This is um, matured in Asia, Scotland, finished in barrels that held Car Caribbean rum. So sweet and tropical notes, nothing on the back. Same thing on the front of the box is on there. On the back, we, it says the, the Glen Levitt has always been about moving forward and not remaining still. From establishing our distillery in a very remote valley in 1824 to continuously setting new standards. We are not going beyond we are now going beyond the rugged Scottish Highlands to discover new influences to com complement our smooth and fruity house style. Caribbean Reserve is a sweet tropical twist to the Glen Levitt to create this lively whiskey. Our makers finished a portion of the whiskey in barrels, which previously held Caribbean rum. The result is a smooth, sweet whiskey, perfect to enjoy with refreshing mixer or neat, just the way you like it. According to this, the nose is supposed to be pear and apple with tropical twist of ripe bananas and syrup. Palette, uh, rich caramel toffee notes are followed by mandarin oranges, vanilla and honeydew melon, and finishing with citrusy taste. So, okay. All right, so I gave it a minute to air. off now yes all right Let's see what we got definitely sweet sugary Definitely does have some 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 citrus or not some citrus some um, tropical fruit to it. I wouldn't really say it says bananas on the box, but I think it's more pineapple. Definitely the sweetness is like um, molasses. There's some pear. Maybe a little bit of banana on the back. Okay. All right. We'll give it a taste. Very sweet. Sugary. Um, definitely some, some molasses. Um... Sweet caramel, uh, vanilla, I really get pineapple, I don't, I don't, I don't think banana is the right tropical fruit, it's definitely more pineapple-y to me, um, very sweet, molasses, caramel come through strong, it definitely tastes young, so I definitely will, um, say that so yeah the no age statement definitely reason why I'm sure is because it's probably not very old um, finish is very clean very short let's see if I get anything else on here now pineapple sorry pineapple 
pears, molasses. Yeah. Do get some pears on there with the sugary um, sweetness, caramel, some vanilla comes through, tiny bit of toffee. Um, there is a little bit of melon in there, more like cantaloupe than honeydew, at least to me. So. On the only place I'm really getting bananas is on the is kind of on the finish, so okay in that sense I guess there maybe there's some bananas in there but that that's where I'm getting it so okay well I really wanted to open that bottle because I thought I might want to try it with a cigar but um so I wanted to go ahead and hurry up and do that one but I'm gonna give it a six all right we'll see you next time thanks for tuning in. Hey.